meditation happens beyond idealism meditation happens beyond idealism man is unconscious although he believes he is conscious and that very belief protects his unconsciousness man is ignorant although he believes he knows that very belief keeps the ignorance intact man is just opposite of what he thinks he is to understand this is the beginning of great revolution this requires dropping the idealism to see where you are and what you are in reality indeed needs tremendous courage it is nice to believe in beautiful ideals all ideals function only for one thing they hide your reality and that is why we go on creating beautiful ideals not that we are really interested in those great ideals certainly we are not interested these great ideals help us to hide our reality our real interest is how to hide the ugly facts about ourselves that is why we choose ideals people go on talking about non violence and all that they do in their lives is violence sheer violence and nothing else violence does not mean killing someone alone violence means when you try to impose your ideas on the others your beliefs your points your belief system this is what all the religions are doing christians impose their beliefs on to others muslim believes and that is the only religion that is authentic this is violence hindus have their scriptures christians have their scriptures muslims have their scriptures jews have their scriptures sikhs have their scriptures they have their own gods and they call their gods by different names these are all hypothetical whether they are or they are not we do not know but there is no hindu sun there is no hindu moon there is no hindu stars there is no hindu sky there is no hindu water there is no christian electricity there is nothing like that all these things are existential people like mahatma gandhi go on talking about non violence but what he is in his real life is an expression of violence it is reported when he was staying in south africa transform he had become the follower of the swadeshi movement that all are equal all are equal then how can there be any work which is lower or higher he had relief the mate who was cleaning the toilet and all those things and he forced kasturba to clean the toilets she was expecting that time and a person who is expecting becomes very vulnerable to smells and she was not able to clean the toilets and all those all night in a cold winter night kasturba was locked out of the house because she refused to clean the toilet this is the idealism of non violence an expression of violence idealism of non violence an expression of violence there are many examples like this his son habidas gandhi studied in british system of education he did his law degree in england but when he came to india and he joined the freedom movement he became anti against all those british systems of education and etc his son haridas to study ba in english and want to wear the western clothes gandhi refused to allow him to use this this is an expression of violence under the cap under the idealism of non violence he did not allow him and he went on his own studied and he was asked to leave the house so muslims were waiting for this opportunity and they named him abdullah gandhi abdullah means abdullah gandhi means the servant of god and haridas also means servant of god and gandhi is reported to have said that he has slapped on my face an expression of violence under the idealism of non violence people go on talking about non violence 
and all they do in their lives is violence, sheer violence and nothing else. The more violent they are, the more they talk about non-violence. The talk about non-violence becomes camouflage. India has talked about non-violence for centuries and it has not happened. Then slowly and slowly you are not only capable of deceiving others, you start deceiving yourself as well. When you have talked for centuries about non-violence, you start thinking that you have become non-violent. That is really the purpose of talking non-violence. Those who are moving on the path have to be aware of this stupid ideological camouflage. It is very easy to be to have beautiful ideals and you'll be surprised if you watch people and if you know their ideals you can be certain that they will be just the opposite of their ideals. Knowing their ideals you can deduce logically that their life must be the very opposite of it. The ideals only prove that they are, there is something that they are hiding behind it. A conscious person has no ideals at all. He lives through his consciousness. He is one, integrated as his inner and outer are not divided. Whatever he is inner, he is outer as well. But all kinds of idealism divide the outer and the inner. It does not allow you to be natural and spontaneous. It forces you to be something other than you are. It gives you many conditions that you should do this or do that. Because of that shifts, you start believing that you are aspiring very hard. And you are soaring very high. Look what beautiful ideals I have got. And behind that empty talk, your reality is just the opposite. The greedy one wants to become non-greedy. The angry person wants to be compassionate. Why you don't accept your greed and anger? And if you accept it, there is nothing to hide. You can work on it. The unloving person has the ideal of love. All the religious talks about love and all that they do on the earth is create hate. All the nations of the world talk about peace, world peace. There are many religious people, religious organizations who do many rituals for world peace. But has world peace been established in? Peace begins with you. If you are at peace, at harmony, that will overflow through you. All the nations of the world talk about peace and what they do is prepare for war. Observe this. This is what we have become pseudo hypocrites. No nation prepares for peace, not even India, which claims to be a non-violent country, the great religious country. All nations talk about peace and prepare for war. War remains the reality and peace remains just a smoke around it to hide. Unless we see it through and through, there is no way to get out of it. Whenever you want some ideals to be fulfilled in your life, watch why. Why do you want these ideals? How can angry person practice compassion? First you have to release anger through active meditations. Then naturally compassion will overflow. It is impossible to it is impossible for an angry person to practice compassion. If the angry person practices compassion, he will be at the most repressing his anger and that is and that is all and nothing else. What else can he do? He, he has been angry with others. Now he will be angry with his own anger. The anger has taken a new form, a new shape. The violent person wants to become non-violent. What he is going to do? He has been violent with others. Now he will become violent with himself. That is what you call asceticism. Asceticism is basically a kind of masochism. It is joy in torturing yourself. You see, people go on torturing themselves. Somebody is not agreeing with you are in total disagreement, you go on fast and to death, what are you going to do? This was called Satyagraha. 
Satya means truth, Agra means insistence. A beautiful name given to this masochism, torture for truth. This is masochism, it is a joy in torturing yourself. And these people become great Mahatmas, they are worshipped. But all that has happened is that their violence has turned inwards. They start self-torturing. You torture others, they torture themselves. But the torture continues and the pleasure in torturing continues as well. The man who lies on the bed of thorns, do you think he is religious? What is religious? In he is simply torturing his body. But you will find people worshipping. He is neurotic. But he will be thought of as a great saint. If it is cold and the snow is falling and somebody is standing naked under the sky, what is he doing? He is simply torturing the body but people think that he is a great soul. He simply needs electric shock because he is psychiatrically ill. Certainly he is mad and suicidal. It is very easy to catch hold of the murderer. It is very difficult to catch hold of the person who is suicidal. But both are murderers. They both enjoy violence. If you are violent with others, the law can defend, police can defend. But if you are violent with yourself, there is no law against you. In fact, even the magistrate and the lawyers and the policemen will come and worship you. You are doing something beautiful. Man has remained in darkness because of such stupid ideas and ideals. The first thing to be remembered is the violence. The violent man cannot become non-violent by any effort. There is no possibility whatsoever. Yes, there is a possibility, but that is not true effort, not true will, not true practicing being other than what you are. The possibility is by becoming aware, aware of your violence. As more and more aware you are, the violence will begin to disappear. Rather than trying to be non-violent, become aware of your violence, of how your violence functions. See the roots of it. Go deep into it, into how it arises, into how it permeates your being and your activities. Watch violence. And in that very watching and becoming aware of it, you will be surprised it starts to disappear. Nobody can be consciously violent if I ask you. You remember when you get violent, you grind your teeth, you show the gesture with your hands, with your fingers, as if you are going to use your nails and canny teeth to swallow the other. This is the expression of violence. But if you try to act this violence consciously, you cannot do it. Violence is a moment when you are unconscious and it captures you. It overwhelms you and you are bound to act accordingly. Nobody can be consciously violent. This is a fundamental law, the secret. Violence is the outcome of ignorance, negation of truth and unawareness. Nobody can be consciously violent. Therefore, all that is needed is to bring consciousness, be more conscious and meditative. Nobody can be meditatively angry. Try to meditate that you are going to be angry today. That is not possible. At the most you can act then. This is what Jesus did when he took a whip and went into the temple and threw out the money changers. He started beating them and turned their tables. That is what he was doing, acting. It was just an act out of compassion. A meditating person cannot be angry. If meditation has really happened, Certainly that is impossible. Meditation means you are really conscious of whatsoever you are doing. Meditation brings more light into your dark caves. It brings more awareness. In that state of consciousness, your quality of doing changes. You need not have ideas. 
The ideas are simply postponing the revolution, the mutation, the way of transformation. Just a few days before, somebody told me, I feel I am stupid. What can I do to become intelligent? This is a strange confession and a question. Now I have to tell him that if a stupid person tries to become intelligent, he will remain stupid. At the most he will become an intellectual and never intelligent. That is how intellectuals are. They go on hiding their stupidity behind words, knowledge and all sorts of information. If a stupid person tries to be intelligent, how can he become intelligent? In the first place, he will be doing everything and acting out of his stupidity. And when you do something out of your stupidity, your stupidity is going to be enhanced and strengthened. However, he can do one thing. He can gather information, he can gather knowledge, and he can start having an illusion of knowing through knowledge. Knowledge does not lead to knowing. That is how people become pundits, scholars and learned professors. Certainly they become pundits, but the stupidity remains. They are deep down as an undercurrent. They just have a good show on the outside and deep down they remain stupid. But there are people who follow them. Then what to do? How to get out of your stupidity? The only way is watch your stupidity. Watch your stupid statements. Go into its working totally. Go into how you act. Go watch fully into it. See it. How it is there. And how it affects your behavior. Watch it in its multidimensional reality. And in that very watching you will become intelligent. Indeed, watching is intelligence. Indeed, watching is intelligence. If you become really alert about your stupidity, then you are no longer stupid. Stupidity is left out. You have become awareness and a witness. And then out of this witnessing, another kind of life arises, which has beauty, benediction, and grace of its own. But it is arduous to be watchful while it is easier to have ideas. For ideas you don't need to do anything. You don't need to be moment to moment aware. Drop all ideas. Never try to become somebody that you are not. On the contrary, just watch whatsoever you are. Watch the fact. And do not create a fiction against it, otherwise you will always be divided. You will remain the fact and you will start believing in the fiction. This is indeed the meaning of hypocrisy. Hypocrisy means you will remain the fact, you will remain what you are, but you, are start, you start believing in the ideas, in the fiction. Your reality goes on persisting in the same way and just on the surface you have a painted mask, a personality. That is not going to help and that has not helped anyone up to now. The man of awareness is possible only if you drop all kind of idealism. The moment you drop those idealism, suddenly you have dropped your schizophrenia. You have dropped the division. You are not two, you are one. You are simply whatsoever you are. Then you have the innocence of a tree, the innocence of an animal, the innocence of a bird, and something more, the consciousness of a human being. Consciousness of a human being. And the meeting of the innocence of the bird and the consciousness of a human being creates Buddha. The moment the innocence of the bird and the consciousness of the human being merges into one another, 
Buddhahood is nothing but innocence plus consciousness. Buddhahood is nothing but innocence plus consciousness. But the man who carries the ideals can never be simple and innocent. It is impossible. He is always cunning. Try to be somebody and reach somewhere. And all that you can do is pretend. And when I am saying this, I am saying it to each one of you. You all have to drop all kinds of ideas. You have to forget the future and also forget that what you should be. You have to only watch that which is and all that can be done right now. You need not postpone it. At any moment you can watch what you are. But never condemn. Remember when you are watching yourself, watching your stupidity, watching your anger, watching your violence, watching your other desires, never condemn them. Because if you condemn, then you cannot watch. Also never judge. If you judge, you have already, you have already taken prejudice. Never be in a hurry to conclude anything in life. Life never comes to a conclusion. It is a continuous process. It cannot, because there is no death, it goes on and on. It is an eternal process. It never comes to a conclusion. Only stupid people come to conclusions. The intelligent person goes on moving, flowing, growing, and flowering in myriad ways. There is no end to it. Even the sky is not the limit. The intelligent person goes on learning each finite moment. He is learner and remains a learner forever. He can never become knowledgeable. He can never become knowledgeable.